Evening, everybody. It's about 6.10 on Thursday evening, first day of December, and this is your closing comment video number 1563 for this Thursday evening. I'm going to take a second here and just, um, just put out my degree of disgust with uh, what the Congress and Senate did in the last couple of days with the uh, railway strike. So um, the vote in the Senate was 71 to 12. I don't know what where the other votes were or maybe they abstained or whatever. Uh, but it forces the railway workers to take the contract that they had already rejected. And the important issue at the heart of that was they wanted two days of paid sick days. They currently have one. And so I'm assuming all of the Democrats plus 10 or 11 um, Republicans signed on to this to force the issue. I don't get it. It is a dramatic overreach. It's a disgrace. And I'm really trying hard not to swear about it. But these guys are just unbelievable. Um, I mean... Uh, you know, it's as if you make 8000 or $10,000 a month and, you know, you lobby, they, your employer lobbies and uh, they get Senate support for it and they come back to you and they say, hey, uh, your new contract is uh, $6,000 a month or $4,000 a month. Um, evidently, you can't strike, um, and it's just a disgrace. I mean, who doesn't get sick? Forget about COVID or the regular flu. Who doesn't get sick two out of 365 days, and we penalize them and we don't pay them? That's a disgrace. Um you know, I know that it's an important industry. Um, I know that, uh, you know, it would be very hard on us to not have that stuff moved for us, but not at somebody else's expense. I mean, it's just ridiculous. These guys deserve a, a reasonable working wage with benefits just a disgrace and a huge and very typical i might add democratic overreach obama did it um, biden's doing it now uh, and it's not just this area they overreach everywhere everywhere they can or at least try Okay, uh, enough of that, even though I could rant about it for an hour. Uh, markets today were uh, gave back a bunch of yesterday's gain, all with the exception of the NASDAQ, which closed up $14.45. Really not overwhelming. Uh, advanced declines were positive on both the NYSE and the NASDAQ. The Dow was down 194, uh, but I want to mention that uh, on the downside today, you had CRM. Uh, this morning when we talked about it, it was uh, actually um, down about, I want to say, 11 uh, tonight. It closed 147 down 13 and a quarter or 8.3 percent, and they beat. Um, the problem was that they lost their co CEO as of the 30th, so Mark Benioff is going to have to, you know, 
cancel some of his vacations and come back to work uh, because he's now the only CEO. Okay, G3 um, mentioned it this morning. Uh, didn't look great. Uh, the stock was uh, actually, uh, it had closed at 2163 yesterday, up uh, uh, 38 cents or a dollar, it doesn't matter. Uh, it was trading at 1460, down $7. It continued and got worse. Uh, traded down to, and the last is eleven dollars and ninety two cents down nine seventy one or forty five cents this is a licensing company that does uh, Calvin Klein and Hilfiger and you know a couple of others and um, guidance was terrible and it turned it down hard um, Asana A S A N um, Yesterday closed 1808, down eight cents. Today got down as low as 1484, closed 1594, down 222 or 12%. Marvell Tech also a miss, uh, down two dollars and 84 cents. That was 6.1%. Um, an interesting one was Ulta, um, which reported and is beating on all metrics um, and what was interesting there is they evidently had a misprint on Reuters or uh, Dow Jones or wherever they released um, the stock actually got up as high as 490 um, which is a new all-time high I believe um, well outside the Bollinger Bands to the upside. Um, but what happened was, for some reason, they turned it back down. Uh, it got back down as low as uh, the low for the day, 463. The last is 474. So from right after they announced um, up at uh, 490, all the way back down to 474, still up 916 on the day, 1.97. Uh, RMED, that's RA Medical, they are in, uh, they're doing an acquisition of a company called uh, Catheter Precision, who does 3D images in a totally non invasive way. And so uh, basically, they have said that they are, they have done. I don't know, 800 of these uh, Vivo uh, 3D rebuilds. And it's, as I said, non-invasive and uh, it really helps with the arrhythmia surgery. You know, uh, people who have tachycardia and um, arrhythmia, uh, up until now, it's been a very invasive surgery where they literally stop your heart and then start it again. So there's just a little bit of tension there. Um, but this is non-invasive and very exciting. And because uh, catheter precision is being bought by RMED, um, the stock was much stronger today. Now, I got to warn you, this was this is not a typical stock just so that you know it's been reverse split one for 25 and one for 50 which means that it's adjusted high price um, is 27 and a half thousand okay so if you spent twenty seven thousand five hundred dollars for this stock back in 2019 or so uh, right now you would have four dollars and 26 cents left um, that said um, after the most recent one for 50 split which was just last month uh, first week in October um, the stock has been uh, still pretty much on the downslope until today. Uh, yesterday, it 
was up slightly at two dollars and thirty four cents. It was actually up sixteen percent at two forty five. Today the high was five dollars and eleven cents, and the last is four twenty six. That's up a dollar eighty one or seventy four percent. So pretty nice. Uh, Kroger had earnings today. Beat looked great this morning was trading at 5077 up a dollar 58 or 3.2 when i did the pre-opening comment but the high in the real world once the stock actually opened on the nyse was 5041 so well lower uh, got down to 4765 last is 4838 down 81 cents 1.65 um, I have a feeling that uh, the issue there is um, their acquisition or their proposed acquisition or merger with Albertsons. Um, antitrust issues, it's been discussed, so I have a feeling that that was much more the issue because the earnings were good. And Netflix, a stock which has gone from 700 to 162 had a great day today uh traded as high as and this is a new recovery high at 319 so it's basically doubled off the low um closed 316.49 up 30.95 or 10.7 percent uh really a nice winner and lots of news chart on the screen is the bonds which had a phenomenal day today even the uh, short term uh, rates up to and including the 10 year notes were dramatic um, on the order of 22 basis points down on yield on the 10 year um, the rest of the curve also lower and this is the long end the 30 years now i've been pointing out i don't know what happened to my arrows here but starting from the blow off high here at 190 i believe it was yeah 191 and 22 i had an arrow here i'll have to put these back on before the weekend for my charts with comments but there's an arrow here there's an arrow here there's an arrow here 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 and there and those are basically lower highs so higher in uh, higher uh, lower prices higher yields and we've come down awfully hard uh, and we made a bottom here now that it's transpired I mean we closed we were down to 118 here uh, the next uh, week we were 117 but we moved higher here we have a test with a higher low the one here as I said 117 and 19 30 seconds here 118 and 3 30 seconds closing on the high and following up uh, in the last four days last uh, one two three yeah the last four days we've gone from 118 to 129 today we were up two and a half so um, we're still making lower highs um, I think we're gonna run into a brick wall here at 135 that's still a pretty decent move I know all the people in our uh, discord room who have been trading the uh, TMF calls um, have been doing really well with them after usually writing them all the way down so very impressive what was more impressive because bonds up dollar down the dollar was down about uh, 120 I believe uh, and let's see Oop. we'll have to do this a different way uh, because the dollar was down 120 at 104 that's over a percent uh, today the gold was up $53 and is up another $3 tonight um, really a nice move 
same situation, making lows here. Uh, you know, this was all in the letter uh, about what I thought we were doing, making bottoms here at this really important level. Uh, and we were up uh, 92 the week of the 7th, came back in, gave up about a third of it, which is a normal and expectable pullback, and uh, this week is now up 49 and a half. I know that I've mentioned this hundreds of times, um, but the silver, which also had uh, a great day, um, I mentioned this just yesterday that uh, we were kind of running a day ahead in the silver, where silver was outperforming. You can see uh, its pullback is really minuscule. Um, and we went through, I was looking for a close uh, just over uh, this 2190 area. We went right through that to 2298 today. Uh, but in keeping with um, the gold and silver, uh, gold was up 3.1%, which is a huge move. And the silver was up 5.5%. Also, um, the uh, gold closed at, um, let me see, 1815, and the silver right around $23. And so that gold silver um, spread that I've been mentioning since it was 96 is down to just under 79. Uh, so that would basically be. Um, long silver, short gold, um, and it's definitely coming back into um, an area that uh, is a little bit more normalized. Bitcoin down a little. Uh, as I said, the bonds up two and a half. Nat gas was down 19 cents while the rest of the energies were stronger. Silver, uh, pardon me, uh, oil got up as high as uh, 83.10 and uh, closed at 81.22, up 67. So that's kind of running out of steam here a little. But hey, you know, a week ago it was $73. Today it was $83. Really nice move. All right, everyone. Uh, tomorrow morning we have uh, all of the monthly employment, earnings, uh, hours worked. So uh, we'll see if... Uh, how we're really doing once we have those numbers.